Hey, greetings folks. Uh, today I've got a uh, S6 or a Mila 6000 series, also known sometimes as the C2 more recently. Though this one's kind of on the older side. We're going to take it apart and uh, see if we can't just fix this up and give it a full service. Now, full disclosure, uh, I highly recommend you go to your authorized Milo service center. I'm going to put a link to that in the description below. But doing this will void your warranty. And a lot of times, again, if you're not an authorized servicer of this or repair person, doing this and not doing it right can make things worse. Uh, so just, you know, heads up, I'm not liable for that. So we're going to pull the cover off, and you can see it's had a pretty darn rough life. Uh, see some motor carbon. Uh, all sorts of stuff we don't like to see inside of Mila, so we're going to just take this apart. And as we take this apart, I'm going to kind of clean some stuff off. And if you want to know about the vacuum I'm using to clean the vacuum, yo dog, heard you like vacuums, um, you can go see a video here on my central vacuum. And I also have a link below to vacuums I recommend. And I have a video, I have an Amazon store where I show uh, what tools I'm using. Again, if you're a professional who's just getting into this industry, that might help you out. So, There is a, a T20 uh, that does fit in there on the drill. I just don't happen to have that as a set right now. So we'll just pull that out, one out by hand. Screws. Now I want to point out this is a common problem with on and off switches and probably why this came into my possession here. As you can see how much play this has. Um, this was an issue specific to this machine that uh, Mila fixed. Uh, and most of these Milas had a seven year motor and what they called a plastic casing warranty. And that was something they introduced um, about the time when these S6s first came out. And it's kind of nice that they did because that helped a lot of customers that had issues with this. And I. I didn't see a whole lot of them come in like this, but I did see enough of them that I would say it was a known issue. Oh, this one's stuck on there. There's actually debris lodged in the side that's keeping this from getting pulled off. If you're wondering what why this is so difficult for me here. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see if we can't just wedge that up. This should just pop right off. Again, this particular one has some other issues. All right, I'm gonna show. See all this stuff that was all caught in the clips here, and that's why this wouldn't come up, come loose. Now there is a quick disconnect right here. I'm gonna pull this off right there, and now we can just pull the board and all this out. So you can see the part uh, where it broke off right there. And that causes intermittent switch issues. But the switch is actually okay in that part of it. So let's clean that out right there. Alright. Oh, see, S4 that has that. All right, here's a headphone warning to anybody using headphones. You know, the proper service technique for doing this. See the case is now separated. 
again, all this stuff is very, very tight, put together to the uh, German standard of guten tight. All right, you can see all that got kind of nasty in there. Now down to where the motor and stuff is. As you can see, it was either used without a bag or the bag dock came loose somehow. Um, so just a little quick tour around here of what we're looking at. There's some things on the C2 that are not on the C1. One is this nice big seal, which has come off with the suction. The other thing that that this machine was the first one in Mila's lineup to have the motor completely encased in this plastic outer casing. If we look in here, we can see the rest of the motor hiding right here. The other thing that was kind of an innovation of this is this has what they call one touch cord rewind, which means you don't have to hold the cord rewind button, you just press it once and it goes in. And as I pull this out, you're gonna get to see the counterweight and some of the other stuff on here. I'm looking on this right here. There's a clip on the side. There should be multiple clips you have to pull off of this one. And that's where having a couple screwdrivers on hand is super handy. All right. You can see me separating the clip. The other thing I need to separate before we pull the cord rewind out is this right here. All right, got the plug separated. So now the cord rewind. I did just put that clip back. Come on. This one is not wanting to separate. There we go. Yeah, all that extra debris has made things very, very tight and not wanting to come loose, which is a pain in my ass. So, and the motor is also held in with the clip as well. If you want to go ahead and loosen this all up, we can. All right, so everything, so there's the motor. And when you get a new motor, it will come to like this. And you can see this is a USA spec motor. So we're gonna take care of that. See more crap in there. And as I was getting at with the one touch cord rewind, um, you can see the uh, inside of this. Now this is a channel where it vacuums off the electrical uh, contacts with the machine. On previous mules, there was a hose here. This one doesn't have that. You can also see there is this little complicated Rube Goldberg machine that holds the uh, release on the cord reel. You can also see the counterweight on the cord reel as well that makes the cord rewind at a consistent speed. So really cool stuff. Oh, and this also has a built-in quick disconnect uh, right here. And that quick disconnect is something that went away when these machines went to a C2 spec of machine. A lot of people think they're the same, they're not. This has right here a power port, which meant this could be upgraded at some time to an electric power head. Now they would later take this out of any machine that didn't already come with the power head because nobody used it because the upgrade was often three, four hundred dollars and at that point most people would rather just go all the way up the line to an S8 or S5 or a C3 uh, series of machine. So you can see there's this sound insulation all over this machine. And I don't know what this stuff is made out of, uh, but you don't want to touch it without gloves because it's like a fiberglassy material and it can make your skin itch real bad. Everything has been dishwashered for the most part, except for these, which I hand washed. So let's put it together. And the, uh, the critical thing when putting this machine together is to put the cord rewind in there first. I'm just gonna get it just blowing off a little bit with compressed air, making sure everything is as clean as possible. So the cord rewind, 
you want to make sure you line that up in this. And this part is not particularly sensitive on this model, but on some other models, those get brittle. So keep that in mind. And as you put this in, you're going to be looking for this clip here in the rear. You're going to push this in. You just want to settle this. This is going to settle with this rubber piece right here. Make sure we got everything lined up. Click. Everything is lined up. This rubber piece is lined up. So now we have two loose ends. And nobody likes loose ends, so we're going to tie that loose end up here in just a second. And this white. As you can see, this is going to clip in right there. Excellent. And this is just going to go in where the motor goes. That perfect. So all that gets stuck in there, and you can see there's just a little space uh, for the wires to go out. In this case, it's really just for sound insulation. It's not supposed to be airtight or anything like that. The other thing, why this is in pieces, we are just going to press that, and make sure that that is loose and clean, because that's the relief valve, and that could get stuck one way or the other from the washing process. Now. I've got a gasket here. Now there's really no gasket along this section because it's sucking air in. It doesn't really need it. And there's a gasket, of course, where the motor sits. Now this black stuff, you can try and get rid of it as much as you can. It's not really going to come off. It's kind of embedded. And all that is is the uh, motor carbon. So I'm not super concerned about that. But that's just something to note if you're unfamiliar with that. So we had a small pause there because I had to put the this sound insulation back in and I actually had two or three of these I had washed for other machines so I just wanted to make sure which one was which. Uh, so that will go back in there. Part of the problem with doing this is this stuff tends to fall out when we do that. Um, but with this particular Mila, everything, haha, -ha, it's locked in. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to pull a little bit of slack and we're going to take this wire and we're going to feed it through here and just pop everything back in. So we've got that. And again, we have that's got to go in there. Place. All right, as everything seats into place, you can push it into place like so by you're grabbing it like that and just seating, making sure this is good. It still might not be seated, so there's again my favorite trick, and, and you don't want to hit this part, just the body here. Going to settle that. You don't have to do that with every Mila model, but certain ones you're going to find. I also like to just test the cord rewind why it's in this position. Again, those carbons are really stuck on there. You can try something harsher, try to get them off, but it, they really aren't going to come off too easily. Um, so that's something to be said. Now we're going to put the gasket on here. This is the bag compartment gasket. Make sure this is clean. The next part is the bag dock, and this part can fall off right here. So we're just going to put this on. And this one, it's all right. It's not completely deformed. But that spring isn't in the healthiest spot. And what that's supposed to do is spring up and keep the lid from closing without a bag. So now it's time to put some screws back in. I say that I'm going to screw around right now. That is the wrong size. So, again. We're just going to put that on there. And I've got all the screws right here. At this point, all the screws are the same. And I'm going to use the five setting on my mechanical clutch. And 
with this particular model, there are a lot of these that are not in reach. So if you have a magnetic screwdriver, you don't want that happening. So definitely magnetize your screwdriver if you can. Particularly this one right here, if you have a screw fall in there, you're, it's just going to bounce around. It actually can go into the handle section uh, and uh, your customer is not going to like that. So that one, again, just putting that in by hand. And that's the suction relief. Also, if this machine has a high-pitched whistle, it's because something's blocking and causing that, uh, that guy to operate. So some of these are going in by hand. So I've got nothing in here that can get sucked up right now, and that's very important because uh, we're just going to test the on and off function and stuff with this machine just to make sure we did everything. Headphones warning. All right, everything looks good on that. So. There's two screws we're going to put in here now. So the main body of this is done. We wash this, as I always do. So let's put this thing together, and I'll show you how to adjust it if it needs adjustment. It probably doesn't. A little bit of lemon pledge is useful sometimes with this. Or if you have some food grade silicone, you can. Uh, you just want to make sure there's no rust on the spring. And then the, you don't have to put the spring in first. But what you're going to do is that little bit of that polish or silicone when putting together this guy. And that makes sure it's got an airtight seal and it's right now I'm going to put this in there and you want to make sure the accordion and the spring are lined up now we're going to look at the shape of this versus the shape of this and we're going to put all this together and all that's going to just snap in there and this particular one is kind of brittle, so I want to just mention that that's something to keep your eye out. Just make sure it's nice and clean. So it looks like the dishwasher dissolved some of the black paint that's on this. Oh well. Uh, beats hand scrubbing the damn thing. Um, so if you need to adjust this or this isn't working at your altitude, the tip to this is cutting the spring down coil by coil. And you get into some real tricky business with that, so just keep that in mind. And that is all together. Now let's put this on here. And you're going to look for these tabs lining up on here. Try and be careful with this one. There we go. Excellent. And you can see the back door. Oh, I didn't get this on. My apologies. Get in there, you son of a bitch. Come on. Be a good man, Mila. Come on. Come on. There we go, that's what I So that bag door is not going to shut without a bag. And I have the period correct bags. So that's kind of cool. And some filters. All right, this is a 6,000 machine. 
So we're going to cut on the 6,000 line. And that is going to go just in here. And you always want to change this. It might not get dirty. But what it's these bags shed a little bit of fuzzies, and what you want to do is keep those fuzzies from going into the motor. So always change that. Put the bag in, line the arrows up. Uh, I've got a HEPA filter on the way, but that just snaps in. So the HEPA filter will come into this machine. And you just want to make sure the bag is settled every time you open the door on this machine. Just push the bag all the way in, because it kind of pops it out halfway for you. So something to keep in mind when working on this. that other piece I put on that was broken that I talked about earlier. I've got one of those on over. So I'll be doing a quick video on that part as well. Well, please like, subscribe, thumb up this video. That helps us out a whole lot. Comment below if you have a Mila Jasper or a Mila S6. I'd love to hear from you.